Hi, this is Tech Tips with Brittany, and I'm here to talk to you about avoiding decision fatigue by using automation. And today we're gonna especially focus on meal planning or avoiding the dinner scramble. Whether you are living alone or with a family, potentially with some picky eaters, you're probably going out to eat less than you used to. If you're like some of the people I know, meal planning has become a more difficult proposition in the age of COVID-19. There are a few cool cognitive tricks you can use when facing off with decision paralysis. The first is put the items somewhere you can see them, like, you know, a list of all of the things you can potentially cook. That way you're not trying to overtax your working memory by both trying to remember the whole list and decide if you want to eat it. And maybe you're also trying to think of, do I have the ingredients for it or not? Or did my shelves clear off? Two, change your perspective. There's nothing quite like shifting things around and seeing them from a different light in order to assess how you really feel about it. If you've ever had something sitting on a shelf for so long that you don't see it anymore, or you're going through and decluttering and don't even notice that the thing is there and that you should make a decision about whether or not to keep it, yeah, we become immune and habituated to our environment around us. That includes your list of stuff to cook. Three, have a default. You can always change your mind and not accept the default, but at least by having a default, it's a starting place instead of avoiding making a decision until it's 7.30 and then all of a sudden you just end up eating ice cream for dinner. Random example. But the best news is one very simple shortcut can do all three of those. My current favorite automation tool is the Shortcuts app on your iPhone. It comes installed on your iPhone starting with iOS 13. As time goes on, Shortcuts only becomes more integrated with our phones, which is awesome. There are still quite a few limitations, but they are decreasing. And there's still so many cool things that you can do with this app. If you decide you want to dive really deep into shortcuts, there are a lot of other great resources out there that you can check out. We're almost ready to make our meal planning shortcut, but not quite. First, you need a list of all the things you can make or are likely to make, or the things your family will eat if it's for a whole family. Definitely sit down and go over a list with everyone else. That way they don't have any room to complain if they don't like the thing, they help make the list. The more you can actually create the list with your family, especially kids, the more they'll feel bought into and maybe even excited about it. Pro tip, if they're actually kids, let them hit the button to make the choice. Seriously, it suddenly turns into a game. All right, if you have your list all ready to go, ready to make our shortcut. We're gonna open up the Shortcuts app and tap new and we just need to find our actions. So the first one we're gonna need is a list. Tap the list and you're presented with a list. This is where you're gonna put in each of the items. If you already have all of the items in a separate text field, that's fine, you could use that. There'll be another example of one of those, but that's not the one I'm making right here, right now. For this one, we're going to use the list action and we're gonna put in the names of meals we can make. I started using this when I was watching my nephew. He grew up in Portland and my sister-in-law and my brother are both very good cooks. His standard for food is high. He has a rather sophisticated palate for a seven-year-old. Well, sometimes his parents who are entrepreneurs, they get busy and it's just my nephew and I for a couple weeks. He gets pretty sick of my really, really limited cooking palette really quickly. Out of the many skills I have, being a chef is not one of them. So we came up with a list of all the things that I made that he also liked to eat. That way we could pick from the list at random until we found one we were satisfied with. As soon as you have your list of potential meals ready to go, we can move on. Now what we're going to use is something that randomly selects the next item for us to look at. We're gonna type in list and go for the action get item from list. You can also do choose, but that would be for the simple one where you're just looking at the list on your own. It says get the first item from the list. Well, obviously we're not gonna eat the cheesiest eggs ever every night. So we're gonna go for random item. This is that having a default choice. So instead of being like my dad and saying, 
I'm going to have peanut butter and jelly sandwich for every meal unless I have some other meal, real story, then this is another way of having a default, but that also at the same time lets you look at your list from a different perspective because it's showing them to you as you look at them. That way, when we add in the other actions, you just have the choice of saying yes or going through again. There are a few ways we can do it now that we've selected the item. We could use an alert or do a quick look. In this case, we're going to use an alert. Show alert. Do you want to continue is a pretty normal one. Tap on the arrow for more options. The title is, and this is important, the item from the list. And the reason we're doing the item from the list is because that's the option it's given us. There are only two options when you get an alert. One says, okay, and that continues on with the shortcut. And the other one is cancel, which ends the shortcut right where you are. In this case, because we want to hit okay, if we're not satisfied with the original suggestion. Otherwise, you hit cancel, you're done, right? So we're going to say that the informational message is hit OK for another suggestion. OK, let's see what our shortcut looks like. Mac and cheese, hit OK for another suggestion, or we can hit cancel if we're good with mac and cheese. There you go. This is the simplest version you could possibly do. If 90% or even 80% of the benefit you can get from just doing this, quit right now. If you wanna see a few other additions or tweaks we could make, go ahead and keep watching, but I'm always a big fan of quitting when it's mostly good enough. Because I started using this shortcut before my nephew could read, we had another action. It was speak text. And I can go in and drag this over right under the random item. And it says get item from list. And you can see you've got a few options, rate, pitch, I'm fine with the default. And then it will also show the alert. So that way you've got a visual and an auditory. We won't actually be able to show off the speaking text because of how I'm recording my screen, but it does do it. You could get really fancy with this, uh, modifying the list as you progress through and removing the items that you hadn't already had in there. That's a lot of work for not just hitting the OK button again. The next simplest one to have it keep going without hitting the play button over and over again on the shortcut is to add another shortcut. First, we have to save this one. We're going to call it Meal Planning Basics. There we go, here's our meal planning basics. Now that it has a title, we can actually do something pretty cool. We're gonna open it up again by hitting those three dots in a row. And we are going to search for an action called run shortcut. The shortcut we're actually gonna run is itself. I promise we will not destroy the universe or get sucked into a vortex. I have done this safely before. You can have it running while you embed a shortcut or not. It saves time actually to hit no. And this way, we can have it run in a loop. So if I'm dissatisfied with all of my choices, I can keep on running it. Here's what it looks like. Broccoli. If I'm not very happy with broccoli, I hit OK, and it runs itself again. Broccoli, mac and cheese the cheesiest eggs ever. And I can cycle through, you'll notice it is repeating. And again, you can remove the items using some fancy third-party tools, but wow, that's a lot of work when you could just hit okay again. And now I've actually run it several times within itself. If I find that I keep hitting okay and I still haven't found one that I like, it might be time to update my list. How are some ways we could get fancy with this? Well, let's say you want to do all your meal planning for the week on Sunday. Then you'd want, well, one, a much longer list than the one I have. And then you'd want to be able to assign it to days. The very simplest way would be to repeat 
the select from list and instead add choose from list and turn on the option select multiple. Then you would manually select them and assign them to different days. Now that you're selecting them manually from a much longer list, again, than I'm showing here, what you need to do is figure out what you want to do with that information. If it were me, because it's day specific, I would want to see it on a calendar. So let's look at how we can make that work. We have to do something with the data or otherwise you selected it and it went into the ether. We're going to do a classic action when you have a list of items, which is repeat with each. So with each item, it's going to repeat a set of actions that are specific to that item. The question you have to ask yourself is, do you want your meals randomly assigned to days or do you want to select what days you're going to have each meal. The easiest, most decision-free one is to have it automatically assigned because the very lowest decision load is to have every meal randomly assigned to a different day. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this actually using a third-party app called Toolbox Pro. It's pretty affordable. It's a one-time purchase and it will save us from adding a lot of extra complicated actions. There are ways to do it in a manner of speaking without it, but it's so much easier. So I'm going to search for the Toolbox Pro Action, specifically Shuffle. And I'm going to shuffle a list. It's a little bit like, you know, when you shuffle a playlist, except this is what food you're going to eat for the week. So I'm going to tap on List, and we're going to use magic variables for the first time in this video anyway, on purpose. So we're going to tap on List, and I'm going to say select the magic variable. And what it's going to pick is the sub list from our original meal list. So that is only the seven meals you selected for the upcoming week. From choose item, we can look at our options. I'm not going to turn on a limit count. I'm going to assume that you actually picked the seven and not more or less. Okay. In order to assign your chosen meals to different days, we're going to need to add in a piece that's going to give us the date. For reasons I'll tell you in a minute, we're gonna start by adding this above the actual list itself. So we're gonna type in date. Here's the date, current date, great. I'm writing this with the assumption that today's meal is planned and you're writing for the next seven days. And by the way, in this shortcut, the way I'm making it, it doesn't actually have to be seven days. It could be any number of days, but well, I definitely don't know enough meals to do that. So we're going to use this current date and we're going to use what's called a variable. And in the variable, we are just saving it to a thing with a name. It can be written over, can have, contain all kinds of stuff. I have done ridiculous things with variables in the past. So we're going to search for variable. We're going to want a set variable, just this default one. And I'm going to call it day for meal. So if I wanted to, the very first one could be today. That's not how I'm actually programming this one, but it is theoretically possible. I'm just going to copy that text because, well, because I know I'm about to use it again. Now we go down to this shuffled list of meals that we already made. And we're going to do fancy programming things called repeat. Repeat with each. So what that means is for each shuffled meal that we picked out, it's going to do this action. So the first thing we're going to do inside of this repeat with each is we're going to adjust the date. What that means is that for each time we run it through, it's actually going to add one day on. And so as we go through, it's going to create an event for each day of the week that says what meal we're going to eat for dinner. That way the whole family can see the calendar and everybody knows what you're having for dinner, right? So we're going to adjust the date. And the repeat item is not really what we're adjusting the date of. We're adjusting the date, so I'm going to delete it, of day for meal. And we're going to add one day to each one. Now the way this is going to make it stay and mean that it adds one day for each time it runs through the loop is we're going to save the variable again, search for variable, 
and replace the original variable with this new adjusted date. I'm going to paste because I'd copied date for meal. Awesome. Now all we have to do is create the actual calendar event that has the name of the meal in it. So that way we all know because it goes on everybody's calendar. So we're going to type in event and add a new event. So the first thing we need is the title. Well, what we want for that is the repeat item. That means that for each meal that we selected, it's going to add that title into our calendar. So what we want is the repeat item because that's going to be the item it's repeating. And I'm going to go back to the keyboard because what I want to type is after the name of the meal for dinner. And the date is, we're going to do show more so we can see all of our options. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit all day. So we're going to say the date is day for meal and it ends at day for meal because it's an all day event. So now it's going to create that meal and put it in the calendar. Should we try it out? Okay. Moment of truth. What do I want to eat? I'm going to have broccoli and the cheesiest eggs ever and BB-8 waffles and burrito strips and mac and cheese. One, two, three, four, five, eight. I basically have to pick all of them. So I'm going to pick all of them. <laughs> Hit done. It's going to shuffle them all up and it's showing me the different meals. And I can scroll through and see a preview. You're only gonna see this preview if you actually have the shortcut open while you're running it. Let's take a look at my calendar and see what's there. Here we go. Here are my different dinners on each day of the week. We did it. Now everybody knows what you're having for dinner, no complaints. I, you heard me. By building a shortcut with just a few actions, you can reduce the buildup of decision fatigue on decisions you make all the time. That way, your brain and your device can start working in better harmony. If you're trying to think of other ways that you can reduce decision fatigue over the long run, remember the simple rules. Put the items somewhere you can see them and refer to them if you need to. Change your perspective by switching the items around. And have a default. You can always reject it and pick something else, but if you have a default to fall back on, you aren't constantly having to remake the same decisions over and over again. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time. I wish this chair didn't squeak too. Maybe I need to switch chairs. Uh, it's sexy.